Hello and welcome to the task UV mapping. In this uh, task we are uh, finally uh, getting our own textures onto our mesh. So it is uh, not enough to just specify the colors of the vertices uh, or uh, just saying that the whole mesh is red or green or some constant color as we have been doing so far. Uh, if we want uh, more detailed uh, meshes then we should uh, use uh, UV mapping. UV mapping is a method where we map the image to these coordinates. So the bottom left coordinate is 0, 0 and the top right corner is 1, 1. And uh, no matter how large your image is or how wide or how tall, uh, those are the corner coordinates and every other coordinate is uh, the interpolation between those coordinates. And then we have our mesh with uh, the following coordinates. So it's uh, 20 by 20 mesh, uh, as our walls have been of the hangar. And uh, if we uh, assign specific UV coordinate attribute to our uh, corner vertices, we can interpolate those UV coordinates and then uh, map those UV coordinates to our texture and then sample this texture at those coordinates. And then we can uh, query the color from the texture and render it onto our mesh. Here in the picture we see that uh, one texture is uh, uh, rendered four times. We also see that uh, there is a light source in our uh, scene here. So this is a brighter spot here and uh, we have to copy our uh, previous tasks code as well into this solution so the textures are also lit. Here in code we have our usual files, we have our uh, HTML which is uh, uh, same old. Then we have our JavaScript file where we do some uh, modifications and we also have uh, vertex and fragment shaders where we have to implement the sampling of our texture. So if you look at the global variables here, we see that we have uh, three new ones. We have the textures array. So uh, in this uh, task, we will have four different textures. We can cycle through and uh, see the differences. Then we have textures to load, so this is a global variable that keeps count how many textures have been loaded. Uh, we see how this is used later. And then we have the texture index, which is our current texture. So this is the index of this array. Currently it's set to zero, so the zero of the texture is uh, shown. And everything else is the same here. Uh, we have our uh, perspective camera. We have our uh, light trajectory. And we also, we also have the event listener that uh, listens to the arrow left and arrow right uh, events. And uh, then the change texture is called. So this will change the current texture uh, from uh, one texture to another. So uh, we see here we have uh, four textures here, Soska 256 and UT 256 and wall texture and stripe texture. So we can cycle between them. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, uh, a loader object, so Grid.js has a texture loader class. So texture loader uh, manages the loading of textures and uh, we set the path to this uh, server here, uh, which is a cglearn.eu and uh, files uh, under the textures uh, folder here. And there are four different uh, textures in this uh, directory and uh, those are loaded on these uh, lines. And they also have uh, on texture loaded callback. So this callback is called when the texture has been loaded, uh, which is uh, right here. And uh, we see here that we are using that textures to load variable here. Uh, we decrement it and then we compare it uh, to zero. So this will go to zero when we have uh, loaded all four textures. And then uh, in that case, we call the on all textures loaded function which is right here, and then we add the quad to our scene. Uh, so this is the uh, mesh that the texture will be rendered onto, and then we call the draw. We also see the first task here. So this function is called when one texture is loaded, finish this function. And what we have to do is we have to take this texture, so the texture is uh, loaded here in this uh, function, in the load function, and then uh, is given as an uh, argument to this uh, callback. And this is the texture that has been loaded. And we can change the attributes of this texture. So you may want to change the minimification and magnification filters. 
So how is it handled when uh, we zoom in or zoom out on the texture? And we also want to set the repeating behavior, behavior of the texture. So what happens if the UV coordinate is outside of the uh, image space? Finally, we have to push the texture to our array. So remember we had the textures array and we can do that right here. with push functions of texture. We use the add quad function, uh, which is uh, defined after the draw. And in the add quad function, uh, we call the create textured quad. So this is uh, where we uh, define our geometry and material. So uh, what we have to do is create the float32 array with the UV coordinates and assign different UV coordinates to, to each of the vertices of the plane geometry. The plane geometry itself has four vertices, so we should have four UV coordinates. Then we have to also add the uh, float 32 array as an R, uh, attribute. Finally, we have the create shader material function here. Uh, we, we used uh, this uh, before to define the light position and also the color. Uh, in this case, uh, we define two uniforms, the light position and the texture that we are using. And that texture uh, value will be changed in the change texture function. So we get the change uh, in the change texture function. We change the texture index, and then we change the uniform on this line. And we also print out onto the console what texture we are using. When we first activate the code, then we should get something like this. So we have our uh, red uh, quad. The red is uh, just the value given in the uh, uh, fragment shader. Uh, but in the result, in the solution, we want this to be textures. And we also have this uh, white dot here, uh, which is uh, a very small sphere, and that is actually the position of our light source. So uh, we can see how the light source just uh, follows our uh, light trajectory. If you copy your light implementation from previous task to your fragment shader, then this uh, quad here should be also lit. So it should have a, a specular highlight and uh, uh, Diffuse uh, uh, lighting should uh, change according to the angle of our light source. So let's get solving. Firstly, let's start with this uh, function here. We already added this to array, but uh, we should also look at these uh, properties of the texture. So what properties the texture has? Let's uh, go to the documentation of the 3GS and uh, here we have the texture. So what I did was just search for the texture. And uh, so uh, if you scroll down, there is this almost almost last, the texture. And this is uh, the texture class that is the, this type, this variables type. And here is a code example as well. So uh, the texture loader is used to load that texture and uh, that, we have, that we have already done. But we also have the wrap S and wrap D set to repeat wrapping. So that might be uh, useful for us and this also repeats uh, which we will not be using uh, today uh, today we are uh, uh, implementing this manually so if you scroll down we also have we have the wrap s wrap t but also mag filter and min filter so what is it said about here you may want to change some min and mag filters of the texture here so let's see what those values can be so the default the magnification filter is linear filter uh, but the other option is the nearest filter. And for the minification filter, the default is linear mipmap linear filter, which uses a mip mapping, uh, which we will be looking in the advanced uh, section of this course. And, uh, but uh, this can also take in the nearest filter. So let's maybe change it to the uh, nearest. So mag filter and three nearest filter. So and same for the minification. So right now this doesn't change anything, but uh, we might see the uh, ramifications of these lines in future. And also we have to change the uh, repeating of the texture. So uh, what we have to do is change the wrap rule. So by default, it's clamped to the edge wrapping, which uh, basically uh, takes our UV coordinates and 
uh, uses the maximum function, function on it. And uh, in effect, it will just stretch out the edge of the texture uh, if the coordinates, the UV coordinate is outside of the image space. But there's also repeat wrapping and mirror repeat wrapping. Uh, this, this time, I think we need to use the repeat wrapping. The, in the example as well, uh, we already have what we want. So let's copy and paste this. So the wrap S is for the U coordinate and wrap T is for the B coordinate. And we want both of them to be uh, repeating. Next, let's uh, implement the create textured quad function. So what we have to do, we have to do two things here. We have to create the array for the UV coordinates and then add them to our uh, material. So first, uh, let's create our UV coordinates, our uh, UV core variable. And this has to be the float32 array. And here we don't need to specify the size of the uh, array, but we can just uh, strictly set the values of the UV coordinates. So what could the contents of this uh, array be? So let's think about the UV coordinates. UV coordinates are 2D uh, vectors. So each UV coordinate has two elements. And we have four vertices in our geometry. So we need four UV coordinates, which means that we need eight numbers in total. And uh, currently we can't really know what vertex uh, should uh, correspond to which coordinate. So let's just put random here. Uh, well, random, but different uh, corner in image space. And then we can uh, later change uh, this to be correct. If we can uh, see the results of this uh, assignment. To add the coordinates to our geometry, we need to use the uh, set attribute function for the geometry. So let's uh, call it geometry.set attribute. And this takes in two arguments. The first argument is the name of the attribute. So here we had to name it uh, UV chord. And the second argument is the buffer attribute class uh, type. So let's, let's create a new buffer attribute. Buffer attribute. And uh, this takes in uh, also two arguments. So the first is our uh, UV chords itself. And then the second one is the number of elements uh, per vertex. So that should be two because we have uh, two T vectors. Now that we have the attribute defined here, we should also put this into our vertex shader. So let's look at our vertex shader and we have uh, two varying variables here. We have the interpolated the position and normal. So that's already defined here. Uh, we saw the definition in the previous task as well. But we also need to uh, here, the task says we need to get the attribute UV chords and then declare varying uh, vec2 and call it like uh, interpolated UV. Let's, uh, let's get the attribute UV chords. So we use the attribute keywords and then uh, this is the type vec2 because this is a two-dimensional vector and call it uv chord. And then we have to declare the varying vec2 and let's call it the interpolated uv itself. So. And finally we had to assign the interpolated uv in our main function. So v equals the UV chord itself. So here in the corners of our uh, triangles, we assign the interpolated UV, and then in the middle of the triangle, this interpolated UV is interpolated according to the UV coordinates. So let's see if uh, any, everything works still. So everything works, no errors are given, and, uh, but still everything is red. So, so we have to change the fragment shader as well. And let's see what's in the fragment shader. Here we see we have the light position, interpolated position, interpolated normal. So that's everything uh, that needs, uh, that is required for the Fong lighting model or PLIN. Uh, but uh, we also need to receive the varying interpolated UV. So let's just declare it here. Not, not normal, but uh, UV. So now this will be the 
interpolated UV that is defined here. And uh, let's uh, let's see what it looks like. So currently, uh, as as you saw, we just have a red color here. But uh, let's uh, replace the two first uh, arguments of our uh, color with the interpolated UV itself. So if I save it, I get this. So now we have uh, some color here, and uh, we see that one color is red, one color is green. And then we have a black and yellow. So what it means that this is uh, the c uh, one zero, this is uh, zero one, this is zero zero, and this is one one. But this is not correct because remember, uh, the image zero zero is at the bottom left corner, and the one one is in top right corner. So we have to change our attributes in the code, and uh, we can do it easily. So let's let's look at this closer. Uh, we want the zero zero to be here, so let's just change, change those uh, positions around. So zero zero should be where the uh, one zero is. So let's let's replace them and save. Now the zero zero is correct, and uh, but the red red is uh, one zero. Uh, is this correct? No, we have we want zero one to be there. So let's replace. 0, 1 and 1, 0 with each other and see the result so that does still not look uh, uh, correct because red and green are uh, next to each other which is uh, totally not correct so we want the yellow to be here in this corner uh, where the red is and red in the yellow corner so we have to exchange the red and yellow and we can do that, uh, so the red is uh, 1, 0, and yellow is 1, 1, so we can just change them. And we save, everything looks correct. So this is 0, 0, this is 1, 0, this is 0, 1, and this is 1, 1. This colorful image is not a texture that we want to see, so we should uh, continue with the implementation of our code, and uh, specifically the frequency shader, so here is this line of, uh, of comment. They see the uniform color texture, and uh, the question is what type is it? So let's uh, look it up. So I'm here on this Mozilla documentation using pictures in WebGL. So uh, let's first look. Uh, there's a JavaScript code here. So this should be handled already by Grid.js itself. Let's scroll down. Uh, but here, updating the shader, so that's that's what we are interested in. So, so the vertex shader we already did, so we have this uh, varying uh, texture, texture coordinates. And uh, in the fragment shader, here we have the texture coordinates, but we have this sampler here. So that's the sampler 2D type uniform, and that's what uh, is used for, for textures. And then in the main function, we see that the texture 2D is used, uh, the function which takes in the u, u sampler, so the sampler 2t is the first coordinate and the second coordinate is the uv coordinate. So let's let's uh, do it here as well. So we have our uniform uh, texture, so that's the sampler 2t and it's called color texture. So that's done. So now let's sample it and the output should be the vector 4 uh, because we see here that the GL it's assigned to GL flag color and GL flag color is the four dimensional vector, four dimensional color vector. So for uh, uh, texture uh, pixel or any other uh, variable name can be used here, and then we have to use the texture 2D. And so firstly, we have to give it the color texture, and secondly, let's give it the interpolated UV. And now we want to use it in our color, and, but the color has only three coordinates, because we are setting the fourth coordinate as one by default. So we can just uh, remove this line completely and take the first uh, three coordinates. And now I saved and I see we have a texture if we look closer, then this texture is a bit pixelated, so if I zoom in, I can see uh, quite a lot of pixels, 
and uh, it's uh, quite low quality. That's that's normal because it's it's a picture and it doesn't have infinite resolution. But maybe we can uh, mitigate it by changing some of the attributes uh, here. So the max and min filter. So currently we have set it to nearest filter, which takes just the nearest pixels uh, value. So this is more uh, apparent when we zoom out with the camera. I uh, change the viewer position from uh, 2 to 20. You can see those edges are very jagged and and uh, sometimes it looks like uh, there are uh, holes in this contour line. But if uh, I remove those uh, nearest filters here and let it be default and I save, then it much more it is much more smoother. But don't forget that the task is to repeat this texture two times in each uh, direction, so four times in total. And uh, this can be done in multiple ways. Uh, one one solution would be to just change those variables here. So it should be uh, some other value than one here, or you could uh, just change the value here itself. So you can uh, multiply or uh, divide or add some value to this interpolated UV coordinate, and and this will uh, change the uh, texture. And also, does it repeat or or is it uh, zoomed in or zoomed out or and so on and so forth? And finally, of course, uh, add your own uh, Fong sort of plin model here to get. Uh, the maximum points and then the task will be complete so good luck on solving